All right, welcome back guys. We got a new bike for the channel and yes, this one looks pretty damn awesome. You guys have might actually have already seen the bike on Instagram or Facebook already because they advertised this bike before they shipped it out to me and I was super excited to get my hands on it. Now this company is Spark Cycle Works. They're based out in Brentford, Connecticut and they built this bike for me. This is like a build the bandit. This is the model of it, it's called the bandit. And they put shocks on it, white wall tires, they put white pedals on here. So it's gonna cost a little bit more than your standard uh, Spark Bandit e-bike. And these do start at $31.95, which might seem like a lot to you guys. This one starts at $32.95 and then I added some stuff. So you're looking at maybe an extra $400 for the parts that are added on here. The cool thing about it is real quick, if you do build a bandit, they will put all the stuff on the bike all ready to go. So as soon as it gets shipped to you, it's already installed. You don't have to work on the bike or do anything. The only thing you have to do is put the handlebars on here and the headlight and you're good to go. Everything else is installed on the bike. Actually, I think you have to put the kickstand as well too, but that's pretty much it. Now you guys might be thinking real quick, that's expensive for an e-bike. Don't get me wrong, $3,000 plus for an e-bike is really expensive. It's technically not an e-bike. They actually list this on their website as an e-moped, and this thing does 40 miles an hour, and if you're going at a slight decline on a hill or something like that, you're gonna be hitting like 45 miles an hour, like stock Suron speeds. That's how fast this thing is. Now it has a 2,000 watt hub motor in the back. It's a 52 volt system. We have a 25 amp hour battery right here, which you can also get a bigger battery for it right up here, so you can do a dual battery setup if you want, and you can have 45 amp hours in total this is a super, super cool bike. One of the coolest things I like about this company is that they give you a bill of sale and then they give you a certificate of origin and that basically means you can take it down to your local DMV and you can get this registered because they have it marked down as a two horsepower motor vehicle and you can get it registered as a moped if you want. Now, if you really don't want to, you could use this as an e-bike, just follow your local laws and state like that because everything's kind of different. Around my area, I can go up to 28 miles an hour and be perfectly fine, no cop is gonna mess with me. But if I am caught going over probably 30 miles an hour, I'm probably gonna get a ticket or get harassed or maybe get the bike taken away from me. So just be on the safe side in your area. So it's cool that you can do both of those and it has VIN numbers on here to verify all that information, which is so awesome. And real quick before I bring you in here with the camera and we check out this bike, I want to let you guys know that I do have a $100 discount code for this bike. So if you do want to save $100 off of here, the link will be down in the description with the coupon code. I'll also put it on the screen just so you guys can uh, buy this bike at a cheaper price and it also helps out the channel. But let me bring in here with the camera and let's check out this bike super quick so we can hurry up, put our GoPro on and get on the road. Let me give you a little quick walk around of the bike real quick so you guys can see it from all angles. I will say it looks awesome. I love it. Even if you don't get the build a bandit and you get the classic, you're still getting an awesome bike. And I actually like the tires it comes with if you got the classic version. It comes with a street tire. These are more of the speedster tires. are a little bit taller and fatter. But uh, oh my God, this bike just looks so, so gorgeous. All right, so let's turn the bike on. There we go. I like the fact that they have their own logo on the screen and this is the same screen that's gonna go on our Rev 1 over here that we're building and it's also the same screen that's on our custom Super 73. So I love these displays, they're super nice, they're very bright, you can go in the settings and adjust them to however you want. You can have it very dim or very bright. Um, you also have voltage right at the top, I love that. That's one of the main things I think you need when riding a bike so you know exactly when the bike is gonna be dead. And then I love the cable management, it's pretty nice and clean. Over here is where you have your headlight button, your turn signals, your horn, and then you have your grips over here. They're uh, not the typical grips that I would use on a bike just because I'm not really familiar with like hand palm grips. I just like the flat ones. Um, you do have a shifter over here. It's a seven speed Shimano. Not too bad. I like the thumb throttle. I love thumb throttles. That's just my thing. I don't know why. BMX handlebars, nice stem on here, a dual headlight setup. You could always get this changed out. If you do a build a bandit, you can get a single fat seven or eight inch headlight on there if you want. You got your turn signals front and back. You got a fender right here. You got a nice big open frame. So if you want to do any custom builds, you can also order, I think a custom swing arm from them too. If you want to do a crazy custom stretch build. Um, I just love it. The fact that you have all this room in here just makes for so much activity. If uh, you can fit something in there. I mean, you can have a big old battery in there if you really wanted to. And check this out, talking about things that are big. Look how big this chain ring is. <laughs> this is one of the biggest chain rings I've seen on a bike. This is gonna make this bike so much more easier to pedal when you're doing about 30 miles per hour. So I'm really excited to test that out. 
And then back here, they have some custom torque plate arms. I love these things. These things are awesome. I mean, I'm not worried about this rear motor coming off whatsoever, or the frame getting damaged. Those things are custom made and they look awesome. Now back here, you have the seven speed and you got the turning shifter right down here for the derailleur. And then you have your suspension, which is obviously changed out on mine. Then you have a rear brake light back here with the turn signals. The brake light works with the brake lever. So every single time you do hit the brakes, it will get brighter and work. You do have two options over here for kickstand. So it depends on if you get a dual battery setup or not. I just have to move this down. So you can put the kickstand right down there or you can put the kickstand in the back. The reason why I put my kickstand in the back is because I didn't want the pedals to come in contact. You're gonna have an issue with the kickstand hitting uh, the cranks. And I'm not too excited for that. I always move my bikes in my garage backwards and always gets caught. So I did not want to have it have an issue with that. So I moved mine to the back. Moving down here in the front, uh, looking at your brake rotors, you look like you got 203 millimeter brake rotors with hydraulic brakes. Super nice. I mean, I was taking this thing up and down the street and slamming on the brakes and they felt so, so good. Another thing down here is you got your logo right there. And then underneath the battery on this side, you're gonna have your controller and all your wires for everything like that. So it's very easy to access. A simple screwdriver will just unlock these things right here. There's only like five of them on here. And that plate will come off and then you can access all your wiring and your controller. You can even probably upgrade it if you want to, but that's gonna be on your own time and your own knowledge of how to do stuff. And one cool thing, if you guys can see it, it is a little hidden. But right back in there, if it's gonna focus, you do have a motor disconnect right there. So if you do have to get your rear tire removed for whatever reason, you get a flat, you do have something to disconnect it with. You don't have to take the center console apart or anything like that to take off the wires for the controller. Super easy to do, just take off the torque plates and the axle nuts, the chain, and then just remove the motor wire and you're good to go. All right, so now that you guys know about the bike, you guys know about the company, now I think it's time to get my GoPro on and go ride it. All right, guys, we're on the GoPro now. We're on the Spark Bandit, and we have a full battery charge. So I want to see how fast we can go. I better put both hands on the wheel because we're doing 39 miles an hour. Oh, my God, this bike just wants to keep on going 40 miles an hour. We're pushing over 2,000 watts of power out of this bike, 41 miles per hour. <laughs> This bike is insanely fast. This is almost like stock Suron speed fast. This is nice. Now it doesn't have the torque of the Suron, but the top speed is almost there and it's not a bad price. One thing I wanna do is I wanna pull up my phone and record the trip and hit a uh, top speed. And let's see if that's accurate to what the display is saying. All right, so I zeroed everything out, done. Hit record, put it in my pocket, let's go. It's saying about 38.5. 39 miles an hour. Uh, I was gonna see if we, okay. We just barely tapped 40 right at the end of this road. It's a little windy out here. It's not too, too bad, but uh, let's see how accurate that is. All right, so on here it's saying we did 37.3 miles an hour and I briefly saw 40 miles an hour on here. I'm gonna say this is off about two and a half miles per hour because when I did hit the 40, it was right towards the end when I was letting off, but it hit it real quick and jumped back down. So this is probably, you know, gonna be off ever so slightly anyways. Um, yeah, so let's just say two and a half miles per hour off from what we read on here. One thing I'm liking right off the bat when I set on this bike is the fact that the seat is so long that if you're a very tall person or a very short person, you can move yourself up to the front and you can have less leg room and feel more comfortable and connected to the handlebars. But then you could also scoot all the way back and be like more of a cafe racer style with your arms like straight out. I love it. And then the fact that you can also change out your handlebars, you can change out a bunch of stuff on this bike to make it your own so it feels more comfortable to you and customize and be one of a kind. That's kind of the coolest thing about the company, just having all the options to build your own, you know what I'm saying? You can either have them do it or you can do it yourself. But I just, I don't know, I love how much like leg room I have on this bike. I feel like I can sit anywhere on it and be very comfortable with the riding position. And that's a huge thing to me to be straight up honest with you guys, because there's bikes that get sent to me and they're just too short of a seat. Like the bike is too cramped. It's been happening a lot lately on a lot of these bikes. And overall, it just kind of makes it a little uncomfortable. This one, not at all. All right, so right here is where I do my test. We're gonna do 
throttle only going to the next light and we're going to see what it does from 0 to 30, 0 to 35. Let's just see what we end up at in this little stretch of road. Then we'll do it again and we'll use the pedals only and I'll start in the gear number one and then we'll work our way to number seven. One, two, three, go. 10 miles an hour, 15, 20, 25, 30. Man, it just wants to move out there, 30. 35 miles an hour, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Dang, man, that's one of the fastest bikes that we've uh, taken on that test right there. That is awesome. All right, so let me put it in pedal assist number five. I want all the power possible, but we're just gonna use the pedals only, no throttle. I wanna see how they react. And I also wanna go through the gears and see how the gears are. We have a longer straightaway to go, so let's see how fast we go and just uh, have a good time. So here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. Pedal only. I would probably highly suggest using the throttle to get you started from the zero to five because it's a little hard to keep the bag uh, like balanced in a way. Holy crap, we're already moving. I'm already doing 30. I haven't even shifted a gear yet. <laughs> that felt really comfortable. Holy moly. This bike is moving while pedaling. 37 miles an hour. Whoa. That is insane. This is one of the nicest bikes I've ever been on to actually legit pedal. Wow, that was fantastic. I felt like I was pedaling up until about like 30 miles an hour. And then after that, I did feel like I was ghost pedaling, but I've never had a bike be able to keep up with the pedals up to about 30 miles an hour. They've always kind of uh, ended at like normally 20. I think some of the better bikes are like 25-ish maybe, but this one went up to 30 and I didn't feel like I was ghost pedaling. I'll try that again. So 15, 20, 25. Okay, yeah, right around there, like 28 and a half, 29 roughly. It's almost 30. You feel like you're ghost pedaling, but this still feels so nice. I still feel like I'm connected with the bike. So this bike really isn't an off-road bike because we do have the street tires on it. These are an upgrade from the company, and they're super nice. I think the white walls look great on the black bike, but uh, I'm just going to take it off-road anyway because I really need to test out the suspension and see how it is. One thing is, is there's obviously no adjustment on the suspension at all. You have no preload, no compression, you have nothing on the front. So I feel like that's a little downside to the bike. Um, we do have some upgraded suspension in the back. It's nice and blue. I love that because blue is like my favorite color. But anyway, let's just get on it and uh, I'll give you a little rating on how I feel about it. First thing we got to do is come up this hill, which I'll go hella slow and show you how much power this bike has. I started from like a stop. <laughs> And it still made it up that thing. That is nice. I'll do it one more time with a little bit of speed to show you that it's not that slow coming up it. Because I never go that slow coming up the hill on these bikes. But uh, let me do it again realistically like I normally do. Alright, we always get a little bit of a, a running start. Look how fast that thing goes up that if you just have a little speed going your way. That is awesome. Oh my god, this bike is too fast for going in the dirt. <laughs> And if you're going to do this, guys, I highly suggest getting an option for like dirt tires and stuff like that. You can do that on their website instead of having these street tires because these are like speed tires if you want to be on the street. I highly so don't suggest these out here, but still fun regardless. Let's see how it does up this little thing. It's a little sandy, I can tell. It looks like the beach. Let's see how it does. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh, yeah. That's actually very comfortable. I'm very shocked. That was actually super nice to go up and down this thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This thing is actually handling off-road pretty good. I got the tires aired up to what they said was recommended for the tires. I didn't air them down to get like any extra, you know, cushion or comfortability out of it. I aired them up so I can get like the most range out of the bike and what it said. And uh Man, I'm impressed. I did not think it was going to do that good off-roading. I would highly say this is like a 9 out of 10 for like a moped style e-bike for going off-road with. That is, damn, it's fantastic. Now the next thing I normally do on this bike, we do a brake test. We also do the turning test right here. 
And that's something I noticed with this bike too. And maybe it's because it's very, very long. It turns a little weird. And it could also be these tires as well too. But as soon as you start turning, it's like the bike stays in that turn, if that makes sense. So as soon as I start turning, I can feel the bike actually just kind of holding that line instead of me having to actually hold the handlebars in that direction. So as I'm turning, like I gotta kinda put my body weight with it and everything like that, but it just feels different than all other e-bikes I've been on. But then again, like I said, it could be these tires, but I'm actually thinking it's how long the bike is, but still feels very good to turn. Like very, very comfortable. Just lean with the bike and you will be perfectly fine. See how it does this. Woo! Going from curb to curb. Oh, that's comfortable. I didn't get thrown out of my seat or anything like that. All right, so this brake test is gonna be a little bit more difficult. I'll try to do one at 30 miles an hour, but I'm gonna go as fast as I can. 38 miles an hour and do the braking test. So it's not gonna be the best because we're going so fast. One, two, three, go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I felt like I was gonna fly off the bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh this thing is a blast wow this is this thing's really making me smile and have a good ass time so i stopped right where that little section was at and i went all the way up to here now i never end up right here i normally end up like a little bit back here but that's just because we were going 37 miles an hour on this bike which is absolutely insane for a brake test so let me run it back. Let's do about 28 to 30 miles an hour because that's going to be more realistic to most of these e-bikes that we have been doing tests on and we'll see where we end up. But I don't think we're going to be this far in the next one. All right, 26, 27, 28. I'm going to let off. 28. Woo! All right. So something I, I, that was weird really quick before I uh, get into the brake thing is when I let off, it went down to 24 miles an hour, but then when I got back on it, it said 28 to 29 miles an hour. So I thought that was a little weird when I left the throttle and it went down four miles an hour within half a second. But look at the braking test from doing that at 20, 28 miles an hour from there to here. And when you do 37 or 38 miles an hour, you end up way over there on that white line. This is impressive, absolutely impressive. I did the Frigo bike just a couple days ago and the Frigo bike was, I believe, way over here and it was only doing about 28 miles an hour 29 miles an hour so this thing stopped so good the brakes feel so awesome on this bike i am very very impressed with them all right so the next test i like to do on these bikes is i like to see how responsive the throttle is one two three go oh yeah one two three go that's instant can you guys hear that instant power i gotta give that like a nine and a half or ten out of ten like it that's literally right up there uh, that's fantastic that's so responsive as soon as you hit it it is pretty much like instantaneously like 0.2 milliseconds like off it is gone that's nice now let's try out the pedals and see where the the pedals land out in uh, responsiveness okay one two three go okay it's a little bit longer of a delay than the throttle. Something I also noticed is that the motor actually stays engaged after you stop pedaling. It keeps going for like half a second. So that's something to be careful with. Uh, let me do this test again. One, two, three. Okay, that's not that bad. That's not that bad at all. It's probably like half a second. That's not bad at all. I, I could probably give that like a nine out of 10 as well because that's very responsive on the pedals. And the only thing I don't like is that it keeps going after you get done pedaling. So I'm gonna stop in one, two, three, go. So it seems like the motor stays engaged for like a half a second until it like completely cuts off. Does the throttle do that too? The throttle does not do it. It's only when you use the pedals. Still not bad, just a safety thing to keep in mind if you are pedaling that the bike is gonna continue to move ever so slightly after you stop. Let's test out the horn and see how the horn is. Oh, okay, that horn's loud. I probably shouldn't push it too much. Wake up some people. So uh, the horn is very loud. Where is the actual horn? I think the horn's underneath the seat, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the horn is right here, if you guys can see that. Okay, so yeah, that's very loud. I'm not hating on that horn right there. Now, let's see how this bike does uh, coming off the hill. I should have been going a little faster, but let's just kind of... Woohoohoo! Yeah! Dude, this bike... This bike is insane. It does feel light in the front. It's very like bouncy and springy. Woo! 
Be careful though, if you do move the pedals a little bit, it will take off like hell. So I'm going to put it in pedal assist zero because if you don't plan on pedaling, maybe even have someone new getting on this bike and they don't really know too much about e-bikes and they barely hit the pedals with something this powerful, they're gonna probably crash or take off out of nowhere. So just something to keep in mind. So now I can pedal and they're not doing anything. So I'll just stick to using the throttle now. Cause when I was standing on it, it started taking off on me out of nowhere, it scared me. The only thing I'm trying to really get used to on this bike is just the turning. The turning just feels very weird to me. Like it gets to a point when you turn too much and it just feels like the bike just wants to keep carving and turning. And it just feels odd to me. That's the only thing I'm noticing on this bike but I absolutely love it so far. And honestly, you're not gonna be turning very sharp anyway on this bike. I do like the fact that when you do have to move it in your garage or maybe you're moving it somewhere where you're storing it or something like that, you do have a ton of room to turn these wheels kind of like completely sideways almost. Unlike some bikes where they lock up like this and you can barely like, you're moving this way and then you're moving this way and then you're moving this way. You're like Austin Powers, the movie scene when he's like moving the go-kart back in that hall when he's like beep, 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 beep. So I like the fact that uh, you have some turning ability on this bike as well. All right, so when we started this trip, I believe we were at like 58 volts, somewhere around there. Um, I didn't GPS a trip for mileage or anything like that. We're gonna do that in a separate video when I take this bike to work. And then we'll also test out like the headlights because you have a dual headlight set up in the front, which is pretty awesome. You can switch that out too if you customize your bike to however you like. Um, you also have a rear brake light in the back that we'll also test out. So we're not gonna do a range test in this video, but I will say that I have probably rode about, I would say six miles so far. And we were at, it's gonna jump up to about 55 volts. So we went down three volts for about six miles or so, five or six miles. Um, that's not too bad, especially with the power this thing has. It has a 35 amp controller in here, 25 amp hour battery out here, which sits very nice. You can have a secondary battery sitting right up here on the frame, which is super nice. You get way more range out of this bike. Yeah, I'm loving it so far. I'm just gonna keep riding it a little bit and have a little bit of fun, and then I'll see you guys back at the house. One thing we can use, I totally haven't used it yet, is the turn signals. Oh, that's nice. So the turn signals stay green to let you know that you're still with your turn signal on in that position and you have to click it off. It doesn't automatically come off. Another thing I like is the fact that these light up in the back blue. I don't know if you guys can see that in the video right now, but the fact that those light up blue at night, that's also gonna let you know that your turning indicator is on as well. So now that I know it's on, I'll just tap that and turn it off. Other bikes I've been on, they don't do that whatsoever. And the fact that you have that lit up is just so nice because there's no clicking noise at all on these bikes to let you know. But having a little indicator that lights up, that's fantastic. I'm also not hating on the grips. Their grips aren't something that I would go out and buy. Cause I'm not a big fan of these types of grips, but I will say that they feel okay, especially like with gloves and stuff like that. I'm not having like any complaints or anything like that. Um, they feel good in the hands. Why are there so many people with this light? What the heck? One thing I was hoping for out of this bike was the fact that it has a long banana style like seat is I wish it would hold a, a more heavier weight load. So it only goes up to 300 pounds. I would like to see like 400 pounds so then you could fit some like two like average size like adults on here and have a good time because you're really only gonna be holding like a small child with you if you're an adult or two small kids. All right, that's why the traffic is so bad around here. School just got out. So hopefully I survive and make it to my house so I can do this outro for you guys. Should've used the horn, should've used the horn. Come on, bro. taking corners pretty fast there. All right, we made it through. I'll see you guys at the house. All right, woo. That was fun, I gotta say. Um, I'm surprised on how fast this bike goes. It pulls so good, especially after 30 miles an hour. This thing is badass. Hold on, let me put my helmet away. Okay, I'm back. So yeah, um, is it worth the money? 
Heck yes. I was going to say hell yes, but heck yes. I, well, I guess I said it anyway, but this is a fantastic bike, guys. It goes so fast. It's actually probably one of the fastest, like, e, well, I guess you could say e-moped, e-bike that I've been on. Uh, the Lyric Graffiti e-bike, that one is very similar to this. I'd say that bike is a little bit more faster, but this one has rear suspension. It has more room to kind of move around, but that's the bike that I feel like I can compare this to. Um, I would highly recommend, especially use my discount code. You guys get $100 off. These guys are super nice to talk to. You guys can reach out to them on Instagram if you guys have any questions about like building the bike and stuff like that. My suggestion on this bike would be get the classic version at $31.95, which is their cheapest option, and then add the parts off their website that you want on the bike but don't have them build it. If you have some e-bike experience and stuff like that, it's very easy to do some of the modifications. Um, I would do it that way because then you get both parts. You'll get everything on the bike that comes standard, and then you'll also get the extra parts that you put in the cart and they'll ship them all together. If you do build the Bandit, what happens is you don't get the extra parts. They're gonna charge you a little bit more because of labor. They're gonna take the stock parts off with the you know parts that you want on there, but you don't get the original parts when you do a build the Bandit, and it also costs more just because of the labor like I said so I would highly suggest going and just getting the classic version and then adding the parts that you want and then doing it yourself when the bike comes in because then you have extra parts then you can take the stock ones off when you put your other ones on and then sell those to make a little bit more money off to the side to have more mods on the bike maybe you want to go to a dual battery setup down the road that's what I suggest. Now some things that I did not like about the bike even though it was absolutely so comfortable riding it off-road is the fact that you have no adjustment on the suspension whatsoever. It worked for my weight being 160 pounds and about 5'10 so I wasn't mad about it but it depends on how your weight is and whatnot. It might not feel as good for you as it did for me but it was fantastic. I just don't like the fact that there's no adjustability in the front and I do like the fact that all the weight is pretty much on the bottom of the bike. You got all the controller and the battery on the bottom. Uh, when you do add a second battery, it is gonna sit up here, so it's gonna make it a little bit top heavy. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, another thing I noticed on the bike, I didn't like too much, and it could be the tires. I said it a lot in the video, but when I would turn, it just got to a point where I just really wanted to start turning a lot harder, and it felt like the bike felt a little bit unstable. Also, if you guys saw, right when I was coming back to the house, I was taking a corner pretty fast, even though I was in a gutter there's no water but you can hear these tires uh they slid so i almost went down to be straight up honest with you guys it was pretty fun uh one of the neighbors he saw me and he was like what the heck was that because it sounded like someone was pulling out around their neighborhood um so that's another thing you know about this bike but it's it's awesome i mean it has a good motor in it good battery system good controller 35 amps you can't go wrong with it and you can upgrade it to however you want. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, I know the bike is flipped around the opposite way, but this chain ring that's on the bike is so nice to pedal. So if you really want an e-bike to pedal at high speeds, like 30 miles an hour, this 100% is the bike for you. I've never had any e-bike out on the market that I've rode, and I've been over on probably like 40 or 50 of them that felt this good to pedal that fast. Now, once you pass 30 miles an hour, you're kind of on your own, but most bikes, only go up to about 20 miles an hour pedaling. Some of the good ones go up to maybe 25, and this one felt very comfortable at 30 miles an hour. Just anything over that, you're kind of ghost pedaling, but this is probably one of the best. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully I helped you decide if this was maybe a bike for you guys or not. Um, I love it. I love the guys over there. Um, the next thing we gotta do on the next video is I will take this thing to work. We'll check out the headlights and the brake lights, and we'll also do like a 14 mile trip, so then we'll see what our range is, because this is a 25 amp hour battery it is very big it's not like your standard 20 amp hour that's been coming out in 2023 but it has a lot of power, so I'm really curious to see what our voltage is gonna be when we uh, get done with that ride. So subscribe to the channel, make sure to click the links down in the description to check out the coupon code and all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.